In this video, I'm going to go over the newly released 2023 roadmap for Sonic Frontiers, specifically my interpretation of this roadmap and what I'm hoping to see in these three updates. I can't believe I'm back to make another video about Sonic Frontiers, especially after the response I got from the first video, but on November 30th, the Sonic Twitter account released this photo and it got me thinking. Although I'm a highly critical person, I'm actually really excited and hopeful about this new information, so much so that I'm about to spend the next several minutes talking about this single picture, and I guess this other one too. Casual gamers and speedrunners such as myself can all find something to enjoy here. In each of the three different updates that they've laid out, there's something that gives me hope. And most importantly, everything is free. I'm not a fan of the current trend with video game companies releasing games in an unfinished state, especially if they're planning to charge consumers for the additions that really should have been part of the base game to begin with. They are correctly choosing to offer this for free. This is not necessarily something that deserves praise, but rather something that does not deserve criticism. What what deserves criticism is when employees of Sega get offended on social media when fans of their games bring up legitimate faults or complaints, but I digress. In the first update, we get a jukebox mode, a photo mode, and new challenge modes. I am a huge fan of the soundtrack in this game, so the jukebox mode has me very intrigued. If we can select any song to listen to at any time, then this can only be a net positive. I would love to run around Kronos Island while listening to one of the cyberspace tracks or even something like Undefeatable. In the picture, Sonic appears to be listening to music in one of the open zones, and that's a fantastic idea if that's what they decide to go with. Just please, no more cringe Fortnite-style dancing. The first update will also feature a photo mode. This one is less exciting to me because I don't personally feel like the overworld is particularly photogenic, but I know that other people will disagree and will really enjoy having this capability. This is a nice feature that will allow people to really stop and smell the roses, all five of them. What I'm by far the most excited about are the new challenge modes. In the photo, we can see that this includes cyberspace levels as well as boss battles. This likely means that we are going to get a challenge mode similar to Egg Shuttle in Sonic Colors. In Egg Shuttle, you play all of the stages back to back as fast as possible with the game showing your final time at the end. This would lend itself perfectly to Sonic Frontiers, especially for the arcade mode speedrun. Another option is to increase the difficulty difficulty of the cyberspace levels by adding damageless challenges, pacifist or genocide challenges, or really whatever else they can come up with. Even more exciting is the inclusion of boss battles. We have no current way to have a rematch with the bosses, which are admittedly some of the best parts of the game. I used to fight Final Hazard in Sonic Adventure 2 all the time as a kid just so I could hear live and learn. A boss rush mode, or even just an ability to fight the bosses again, is such a great idea that I'm shocked it wasn't included in the base game. This issue has been raised by many fans since the game came out, so props to them for addressing it. In the second update, we get something for Sonic's birthday, open zone challenge which is interestingly used in the singular form, and new Coco. Sonic's birthday is on June 23rd, so that is almost certainly the approximate date that this update will be released. I'm not sure what to make of Sonic's birthday event, Sonic's friends did throw him a birthday party in Sonic Generations, so this isn't the first time that they've done something like this, but I'm hoping for something a little more grand. I want some party minigames, maybe some confetti when Sonic is doing air tricks, some new music, just something. I'm a firm believer that if you do something, then you better do it well. Up next, we have the open zone challenge, singular. My immediate thought here is that there must be one challenge for each of the five open zones. There's really only one thing that I want this to be. I would love for this to be one gigantic island-wide obstacle course to test your true mastery of Sonic's movement and platforming capabilities. Please don't let me down. Lastly, we are getting new Coco in this update. If it's only new models of Coco that you can collect in the over world, then this will be extremely disappointing. Here's what they need to do. Give us a Coco Garden so we can raise our Coco that we collect throughout the game. It can be the spiritual successor to the wildly popular Chow Garden that the Sonic team refuses to bring back for some reason, possibly because they hate money. In the final update, we get new playable characters and a new story. The characters that were shown are Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. This hopefully means that we're going to be granted the ability for Tails to fly through the open zones, the ability for Knuckles to climb up any wall that he sees, and Amy's ability to use her hammer to boost herself high into the air. 
I really want to see new special combat abilities tied to each of these characters. I would also love for a switch mechanic to be added to the combat so you can alternate between each of the playable characters. Combat is incredibly lacking right now, which is to be expected given that Sonic games have never been about combat, but this is an area that they can certainly improve on. Furthermore, Knuckles has already alluded to going Super Knuckles during the main story of the game, and I was expecting this to be a reference to a sequel, but this would be a perfect chance to cash in on that investment. I think everybody would love to see Super Knuckles back in action. As for the new story, there's two ways that I can see them going with this. The first option would be to fill the gap between the end of Rhea Island and the start of Oranos Island. After activating the final tower on Rhea, Sonic becomes fully corrupted by taking on too much cyber energy, and he is ultimately restored by the power of friendship. What if his friends have to venture back into cyberspace to restore Sonic? And those are the levels and story elements that get added. That would be a nice change that I would be in favor of. The other option is to add some sort of storyline that either happens after the true ending of the game, or exists entirely as a standalone story. This is another totally viable option. Regardless of what direction they take, I'll be playing it, probably while wearing my holiday cheer suit. To wrap things up, there's very few bad things to say about these scheduled updates, even for me. I just can't do it in good faith. This is almost entirely positive news, and I'll be there to experience each update with the rest of you. For now, the speedrun is calling me.